Hello there. Uh, in this video, I am going to try to explain somehow uh, the concept of uh, pass width modulation, PWM. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this faucet. I'm at the kitchen, and I'm going to use this faucet. Uh, what I'm going, I'm going to use this for is to represent a pulse. And uh, the way that this is going to work, you can think of of the faucet. And the water that is coming out, the water coming out is the signal, and the faucet is the, gen the signal generator, or you can think of it as a power supply, and what's coming out is DC voltage, for example. Uh, so every time I open the faucet and I go like that, we are transferring all the energy that we have to whatever system is here. Uh, but this is, there's nothing. We just try, the energy is just going away through the through the sink. <laughs> okay. So now when I shut it down, that is zero. I'm transferring no energy. There is nothing coming out. But if I start doing this, you can see that I can do some type of pulse. That you can think of it as a pulse. So if I go like this. This will be a long pulse. You see that? And a certain amount of time, I can do that so many times, right? If I was to time it. But um, so right now, this is a long pulse. If I want short little pulses to be transferred, then I can do this. Right? So what does that mean, and how does that help helps anything with pulse modulation? So the idea will be. The main idea, the core idea, is that you can actually control how much energy you're transferring to whatever element you have. In this case, we call the load, to the load. Uh, so to simplify the load, or to, to show the load, I, have, I built this here with Legos. Uh, and I'm going to use this little thing to simplify the effect of the pulse or the signal or the energy coming from the, from the, uh, from the faucet to the motor or to this this little uh, helicopter thing that I bought for my son. Uh, so every time the idea will be when I open the faucet, I'm transferring energy or that could also be understood as you connecting a, a, a battery, for example, to a motor. So you connect the battery to the motor without interruption, you're going to have the motor spinning at whatever speed it's going to go, whatever RPMs is going to deliver. But now, so now I'm going to open the faucet and we're going to see this thing spinning, right? Well, let me just put it closer. But there you go. So that will be me transferring max energy to the motor, right? You can see it is constant, it's nice. So that's, that, that's great. So now, the problem with this is that the motor, if I open the faucet like this, at this rate, the motor will be spinning as fast as possible. However, uh, many times we don't want that. In the, like, for example, a, a car, you don't want to give all the power and go as fast as you can as soon as you do that. No, what we want is a way to control the amount of power that we, that we give to this motor. And by doing that, by controlling the amount of power, we're going to be able to control the speed at which the motor operates or, or the motor is, is, is moving. And I'm going to demonstrate that in a little bit. So. Basically, if I, if I just do this, right, if I just do that, yeah, it's less power, so the motor slows down, which is great, right? But I could also do the following, and this is, is done because it's easy for us to do that in electronics. We can do a pulse instead of a continuous signal. And what that looks like will be like I did before. Now I'm going to do a long pulse. And you can see that when I'm doing that, the long pulse moves the motor X amount of it does X amount of rotations. Now, that wouldn't be. You can see how it kind of slows down when I shut it down. Well, that's because my frequency, the amount of times that I'm doing that, is pretty low. You know, compared to electrical signals, that's incredibly low. This is. So, but if you were to do that very rapidly at the precise amount, you can see how the motor begins. It begins to move to almost to a constant speed. Again, this is because uh, you know I'm, my frequency of me shutting down the, the faucet is not as fast as, as it should be. But 
it you know that moves a long pulse does that right no what if i do fast pulses l little tiny pulses and by pulses i mean the column of water that is that goes down to this thing right if i do a long one it goes this big if i do a little one it goes this much so what if i do little ones you can see now that i'm moving to a different speed the, the motor is moving to a different speed I'm just doing short bursts of energy instead, right? So it's a fine tuning between frequency and um, and how long the pulses are for you to achieve the speed that you want. So basically, that's what uh, pulse modulation does. E uh, pulse width modulation. E allows us, in the case of an electrical motor, to control how fast it goes. It's just that simple. Um, in the case of an LED light, for example, or a light, right? What happens with a light, what you're going to see, you're going to see the light dimming, in, dim, dimming down or up. It'll be flashing, essentially. It'll be flashing. So the faster the pulses are, the faster the light will flash. In my case here with my motor, the faster my pulses are, the, um, the different speed that I get from the motor, right? So that's, that's the idea of pulse width modulation. Uh, and we just did it with this little thing. Uh, so there's another concept that comes after it that, that is important to mention, and that's the concept of a uh, duty cycle. And the duty cycle is nothing but just the amount of time that the pulse is on, okay? In this case, you can see there that it's a long pulse that I'm doing. And you can see my column of water, right? It's like somewhere big, like that. But if I do that, that's a little smaller. Right, so I'm sending less energy more frequently, but I could also send less energy in the same amount of time that I was doing the other poles, right? And that will translate on the speed again. So that will be the dirty cycle of this pulse, the, the amount of uh, of water that hits this this uh, this is uh, this motor thing. Okay, and I made this drawing here for you to for to explain that, and you can see here what I did. I'm just moving around with my camera now, okay? You can see here what I did. So this is the faucet, on all the time, right? It's a big water column. This is the faucet on 80% of the time. You can see that. What I did here, you can think of it as an inverted um, Cartesian coordinate system, which I have time here. Uh, and here is the magnitude of, of, my, of my signal. In this case, it's just the water, right? So you can see when I do small pulses like that, I can get 80% uh, out of this of this uh, this setup. But if I do smaller pulses, I can get the same amount of time that the, the pulse is on is also off, on, off, on, off, right? So this means this is a 50%. It's a 50% uh, duty cycle because it's on 50% of the time. In this case, my off time is on, is on for uh, less amount of time. In my own time on the on the on the water thing, is uh, about eighty percent of the time, right? So that is a, so this is a hundred percent. This will be eighty. Now, that in electronics or when we doing some kind of programming like Arduino, for example, it translates into something like this. You can represent this. So you can see what I did. I'm just inverting, right? I'm using better, let's say, and I'm, and I'm drawing it now. You can see that, right? So now this here is the actual representation of the signal. You have your on time and you have your, uh, your off time. Same thing, 50%, which it, it matches with this idea here. But that's basically how you, um, the, the whole idea behind pass width modulation, that it allows us to control the amount of energy we send to a load being you know it can be a, a hidden element it can be an LED light it can be a, a Lego motor like that one <laughs> and the faucet uh, but yeah that's, so that's the that's the idea here uh, okay cool thank you bye